Hi everybody, welcome to a new All of the Above Budget Movie Review. And this time, it's going to be fast. And it's going to be furious. Almost at the end of the year, and it's, a literal, it's literally a race to the end. Of 2023, of course. Um, oh, I almost spoiled it. Uh, today, it's time to take a franchise that has gone extremely big over 10 movies up till now so I'll try to do it as quick and fast as possible and welcome to The Fast and The Furious starting off with the first movie The Fast and The Furious uh, which so, yeah, well, this is the Blu-ray with the first six movies. So, coming back to the first Fast and the Furious. Um, it's a standard heist police movie, uh, but it's not that standard. Um, it has Paul Walker playing Brian, and it has Vin Diesel playing Dom Toretto, and... His crew uh, with Michelle Rodriguez as his girlfriend, Lenny, uh, Letty, sorry. And though, yeah, those are the main, main cast for the movie. And Dom's sister, uh, who's also the love interest of Paul Walker, uh, Brian. Um, yeah, it's... It's a good movie, it's spectacular, it has racing in it, it has action in it, it has humor, humor in it. And I really, really loved it. Uh, it fast cars, fast women. Uh, if you want to be uh, um, politically, un politically incorrect, it's a real man, man's movie. Um, but in the end, it's just a movie for everyone who enjoys good movies and, and good action, good humor and friggin fast cars. Uh, well, after one movie, it was a very good success and fans loved it. People, uh, it made enough money. So there had to be a sequel and that would be Too Fast, Too Furious or Fast and Furious 2. Uh, this one stars just Paul Walker and another actor I th who comes up in the rest of the movies, but I can't get to his name by now, so I'll put it down here. Um, it's a good movie, and it tries to be a copy of the first one, but with his own style. Um, it's a nice banter to see between Paul Walker and his friend. Um, and we like the fast cars, we like the heist. So it was a good movie. It wasn't a spectacular sequel, but it was a good enough movie. And we love to see us some more Paul Walker, of course, because he flamed, he did it very well in part one. Then came a part three, uh, Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. And that was a totally different beast. Um... Because there was no Paul Walker, there was no Vin Diesel, uh, there was a new, new person playing in that movie, a kind of Paul Walker clone. And I liked the movie, and it set up a Han story who played. I don't know if he played. He was part of the first movie, I think. Um, but at least he was in five or. Yeah, in four and five, or four and five, but I'm jumping ahead. Uh, so in the third movie, it plays in Tokyo, and we follow this boy who is kicked out of school, goes to live with his dad in Tokyo, and finds uh, he comes into the world of drifting, uh, drift racing, where he meets Han, and there's one scene in that movie that we will revisit a few more times in, in the saga. And which will have more impact on the 
total story of the Fast and the Furious universe. Yeah. Um, love the third movie. It was another great race movie. You know what you expect uh, with this franchise. There is a bit of a formula. Um, but it makes for some good entertainment. But people missed Vin Diesel uh, after he made a cameo in, in the third movie, in the end. And they missed Paul Walker. So, in part four, Fast and Furious, they reunited uh, Vin and Paul to play the dynamic duo again. And from that point on, the movies intertwine and have their own timeline and follow each other. So there was a plan to make it a bigger franchise. I think Vin Diesel became more active as a producer. So part four was a real good race movie and the re re yeah, reuniting uh, Dom and um, Brian. And yeah, I think five fast and Furious 5 did the same, um, but it was a Rio heist. Uh, the f yeah, uh, this one plays in Rio and it uh, has some good action, and but it starts to go over the top. Uh, I think that's where you start to see, well, these movies have to be bigger than the last one. Uh, but five was still a good movie with uh, the the big vault hanging behind the cars and being dragged all over the street. Um, we see uh, Dwayne Johnson for the first time uh, trying to catch Finn Diesel and his uh, gang um, as Officer Lucas Hobbs, Luke Hobbs, uh, which we will see more of. Uh, we have. Uh, one Shaw brother, uh, who was in, I think, the fourth movie, I don't know, or the fifth. I will come to that. Um, and we get to see more of Han uh, in the crew of uh, Dom. And, well, it's, it's a good action movie, it, it, five and... 6-2, it, it follows the story and makes the story bigger. Uh, we see Paul Walker being Brian, of course, reconnecting with uh, Dom's sister and eventually becoming a father. And yeah, we see the whole family thing that Dom wants grow. And so in part six, it, it, it also it has the second Shaw brother played by Jason State Jason Statham Statham and yeah that's where we uh, go for the rest. Um, so the first six movies start off as well, creating the universe and setting the rules, setting the story, and literally setting some things up for, for later. Then came uh, Fast and Furious 7, and that was the most difficult movie to make because uh, Paul Walker died uh, during uh, filming of this movie and some digital help was needed to finish the movie and to, well, let him off with a good ending at the movie. And I think the ending of Fast and Furious 7 is the most heartfelt and most personal ending on a movie ever. Uh, we get to say goodbye to Brian uh, in a way that even choked me up. Um, knowing farewell that, uh, fair, knowing well that uh, Brian or Paul Walker died before this movie was released. And that it's not only the act, the, the 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 characters in the movie um, saying goodbye, or but also the actors during filming 
it was their way of saying goodbye or paying homage to him. Um, so it really choked me up. Um, the end uh, part of the movie where they drive off together and in the end their roads are split. Wow, goosebumps. Um, and still a freaking good movie. Um, but then came the point that the yeah well, they had to go on. Um, they didn't have Paul Walker anymore, so his character didn't return. Out of respect, of course, they could also always recast another actor to play him, but they didn't, and I think it was a good choice. Um, yeah, then it was time for Fast and Furious Eight or F Eight. And it was, yeah, big, big and bigger. Um, this is where they become spies and we get introduced to Mr. Nobody. And, or already are introduced to Mr. Nobody. I don't know anymore because, like I said, there's a formula in there. So there is a timeline and sometimes things get a bit screwy. So, um, yeah, we get to see uh, in one of the movies why Tokyo Drift uh, ended the way it did. And that, that's when we get introduced to Jason Statham. Uh, but in this movie, we get a new uh, villain. And we get Dom uh, betraying his own people. And we find out why, because... Well, you just have to watch. But it's all about family. Um, so we get uh, Dominic being hunted by his own people. And we get Cypher, who is a big villain in this movie, but in other movies too. So, And in this one, well, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. We, we see a submarine... Uh, being, and cars on the ice and it's, it's spectacular it's like I said there is a formula to these movies and it just gets bigger bigger and bigger uh, like I said the submarine and, and cars on the ice and explosions and it's awesome um, yeah then there was a spin-off in between but I'll come back to that the that in the end um, Getting to know more about Dominic and his family and his um, past, we get Fast and the Furious 9, or F9. Uh, in this one, we meet his brother, played by John Cena, his brother Jacob, uh, who helps Cypher um, get another super weapon, and Dom and his people have to take them out and find the weapon and we see the return of Han and that's where we get the third version of his death um, yeah so uh, we see Letty die in, in one of the movies so people don't stay dead in the Fast and the Furious series or so we think uh, some people just return because they're fan favorites, I think, or, yeah. Uh, but Nine is a good movie. I liked John Cena's uh, betrayal, of, betray, portraying of his brother. And I like the backstory about how he ended up in jail, uh, which was hinted on in the first movie that he uh, beat a man to an inch of his life with a, right, with a wrench. And now we know why. And we got to know that he had a brother and what happened to that brother and between them. And that it did end up uh, very well at the end. Um, yeah. Uh, with, yeah. I can't go into that without spoiling anything. Uh, there was a bit of part 8 that I liked with Jason Statham. And I just want to say it's the airplane scene. Uh, but I don't want to spoil too much, so I'll just name it the airplane scene. That's why it just popped up, popped up in my head. 
because I know John Cena will return in the tenth movie, and but I'm in the ninth at the moment. Uh, we see yeah, Cypher return. We see John Cena. We see Dominic Toretto. Um, yeah, we see the crew coming back, and we see Han coming back. That's why we see the third version of his death. And that it was set up with the help of uh, Mr. Nobody, uh, played by Kurt Russell, who played a part from, I think, part 7 up to 9. Because in 9 they have to find him. Um, so I like 9. It was a very good movie. Um, and this one is more recent. It's Fast X, the 10th movie from the Fast and the Furious series and Fast X is the beginning of the end like I said uh, it has to wrap up the, the series uh, not this one but there will be a part 2 of part of uh, Fast X uh, mostly I think it will get another title by the time it will come out maybe it will be Fast 11 or Fast and Furious the end our final ride, last ride. Nobody will know just when the movie comes out. And that's supposed to be 2025. So we hope. With the writer's strike going on and everything. Um, but this movie, we see Jason Momoa uh, come as the villain. He plays the son of the villain we met in part 5. Uh, we see a part of part 5 with the... With the vault and the race, uh, yeah, trying to get the vault uh, from the fifth movie. Uh, so this ties into the fifth movie. It has some, yeah, bit of nostalgia to the other movies. And they talk about Los Banderos, Los Bande Banderos, and that was a short movie made. I think it was between two and three, uh, but I don't know for sure. At least it was a short movie in the Fast and the Furious universe. Um, yeah, this one ended on a cliffhanger. So we're still waiting to see what happened. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, I loved this movie. I saw it in the cinema and I'm re-watching it right now. Not right now when I'm making this movie, but I'll, this video. But after I finish this video, I will finish the movie. But I wanted to uh, record this first. And it's, yeah, I think it's a very good Fast and the Furious movie. Um, I'm just not a big fan of Jason Momoa. And I think he's a bit, like, Joker weird. He's a bit eccentric. And maybe that's the power of his villain. Because uh, the villain he plays is a very ruthless uh, SOB. But, yeah. I think the movie, at the end, it kicks ass. Um it leaves you wanting for the sequel. And I'm curious to see if they will finish the entire saga in that sequel. But we have to find, uh, we have to wait and find out. So um, then I wanted to end on the spin off. There was a Fast and the Furious Hobbs and Shaw. We see Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who play, played a big part in. Well, a lot of Fast and the Furious movies up till 8. And Jason Statham, who is still in the movie, or just made his return in part 10, uh, who went to villain to ally. And J Idris Elba, uh, he plays the villain. Uh, it's just a fun action movie. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's big, uh, but not as big as Fast 8 or Fast 9. Uh, it's more like the action and the the, the yeah the name calling between Dwayne and Jason uh, Hobbs and Shaw. It's nice to see how they poke fun at each other and still kick ass. I mean they're both good action stars and they made a freaking good action movie. Uh, yeah, not a really big spoiler, but at the end of Fast Ten, we see a bit of return of Hobbs. So maybe he'll be in the 11th movie. We'll just have to wait and find out. 
Um, that's where I want to end. Uh, if you saw the Fast and the Furious movies too, and uh, say if I missed something, or if you disagree, want to tell me something else, leave it down here in the comments. If you're down there, uh, subscribe too. And if you want to like, like it. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.